I'm going to do a video today that uh, shows the full reloading process of the 50 Action Express cartridge. It's uh, most commonly shot out of the Desert Eagle Magnum Research Pistol. Um, it's a Magnum cartridge. And doing that today, we're going to obviously use the spent brass. I'll take you through uh, how to deep prime and resize it. We'll be using CCI uh, Magnum Large Pistol Primers number 350. And then, of course, we've got our um, set of reloading dies here. This is a, a Lee set, it's a three piece set. It's got the uh, uh, deep prime and resize die the powder through expander die, and then the uh, bullet seat and crimp die. For powder we're going to be using IMR 4227. Uh, the recipe that I use um, calls for 31 grains, which is actually a max load. I load a uh, 325 grain spear jacketed hollow point uh, on the tops of my hand loads. Uh, it's it's kind of a heavier load, but I get pretty good performance out of my Desert Eagle with it, um, and really good accuracy. I've got a red dot on it, and it uh, really holds zero nicely. So that's the recipe that we're going to be using. All right, so really the first step here is to lay your brass out. I like to use an old TV tray top or whatever you want to call it. Uh, get everything all laid out. Uh, in this particular case we have nine, 19 pieces of brass that we're going to be processing. Kind of a small batch I know, but in a Magnum handgun load like this it gets expensive pretty quick. Um, we're going to be using the RCBS case slick. Um, I like it better. I'm, I've used uh, other products like the Hornaday One Shot, um, which which is okay. But I, uh, I really prefer the uh, RCBS case slick over over that just because it, it uh, stays on the cases a little better and uh, helps in lubrication so the first thing that you're going to want to do is kind of kind of shake it up and then just put a nice even coating over over all your brass that's absolutely key in this process because you don't want to run a bunch of brass through that hasn't been lubricated correctly because um, it will get stuck in your tooling so with that We'll get into the uh, depriming and resizing portion. So the first thing is to uh, obviously identify your decapping and resizing die. You can see the pin at the bottom is for pushing out the spent primers. And then wh what you're going to want to do is um, put your your uh, case holder into your press. So just go ahead and attach that into your press and then run the ram all the way up and then screw your die down so that it's just touching the top of the press or the top of the, the holder. Once you've done that, uh, lower this uh, ram just a little bit and then screw it down about a quarter of a turn so that when you push down it actually cams over. set up correctly now. So then now we're ready to actually start processing some of this. So what we want to do is uh, put our brass in and actually uh, th this is not lubricated well enough. We'll hit it again real quick and then uh, we'll go ahead and give it a whirl. So pull this down see the spent primer dropped out and now uh, now the primer has obviously been taken out and the brass has been resized because previous to this if you uh, take one of your pieces of lead and a case it'll actually actually that's not even too bad but as you can see it's it almost drops right in there once you resize it it, it does not so We'll, uh, we'll go through and run, run all these all the way through the, the first step here. Alright, so now that we have everything decapped and resized, 
we're going to go ahead and prime the cartridges now utilizing the uh, Hornaday hand priming tool. You can also use your press to do this, but I really don't care for that. This is um, quite a bit faster. So all you're going to do is take your uh, shell holder from your press and uh, put it into your priming tool. And now uh, you need to just dump your primers in there, so you just take the top off. Take your primers out of the... Take your primers out of the package here. And they come in a little tray like this. And uh, all you're going to do is just uh, dump them in here. And then if you just shake it a little bit, they uh, go right side up pretty easy. You may have to adjust one or two. And then you can go ahead and put your cover back on. And uh, now you're ready to start priming, you just kind of hold it downward like this, and then they fall in. And then all you have to do is put your, put your cartridge in here, and then just squeeze. As you can see it's primed so we'll just repeat the process as you can see once you get going here this goes pretty fast which is one of the reasons I really like this setup. Okay, now that we've got everything all primed, I just transferred them into this red tray here. Uh, five five uh, to a row here so you can easily count and everything that works real good when you're doing large batches. Uh, so obviously you can see that I have uh, not quite five or four rows here. We have 19 pieces. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take them through the next step here, which is going to be to um, apply the expander die to them. We'll get our press set up for that. We'll take out the decapping and resizing die. And then, uh, so this is what the expander die looks like and if you look inside there, you can see that there's kind of a, it's gonna put a bell on the outside. Um, so we can get our lead in there a little easier. And then this is actually a powder through expander die which means that um, I obviously if I had a little bit different of a setup here I could uh, powder them while I was expanding them but uh, I'm not going to do that. So for this, this is kind of just a touch and go uh, setup with this here. What, what you want to do is go ahead and put your, your brass in your brass holder, run your die all the way up and then just go ahead and Tighten this down until you can uh, feel the the brass touch, and then just go turn by turn until you get a big enough bell on there. So now I've, uh, and you can tell you've got it when you uh, take your lead, and it just kind of drops in there. So as you can see here, I, I don't have a large enough bell on there yet, so we're going to apply another turn to the die. Check it again, still not quite enough. Apply another turn to the die. Still not quite enough here, so we'll go maybe another time here. One more turn. Uh, it's getting a little better. I think we'll go maybe one more turn here. And actually, I had this die set up before, so that's why this lock ring is is where it is. It's not a coincidence. So go ahead and run it up. And as you can see, it fits in there pretty good this time, so that's probably where we want to be. We'll go through and run all of our brass through uh, this piece of tooling right now.
All right, so now that we've run everything through the expander die, the next step of this is going to be to um, set our powder charge, and we're going to be using the the RCBS um, powder drop for this. It's a match grade powder drop. Uh, I've had it for years, and I really like it. So, uh, really, all that all that's uh, all that it takes to dial this in is to First of all, dump your powder into the, the hopper here, and like I said, I mean, we're only doing 19 pieces, so it's not, uh, we don't really need a full hopper here. It's 31 grains is the recipe that I'm using. So, just always be careful when you pour this in, you don't want to generate any kind of static electricity or anything like that, or you're going to be probably not reloading ever again. Put the cap back on. So now, uh, what you're going to want to do is get your scale out. And I've got a just a cheapy digital scale. It works great. You don't really need anything fancy. So once I get this set up, all I'm going to do is zero out my scale, which I guess you really can't see me doing right now, but I am. And then I'm going to take one of my cases and then just see where I'm at for powder right now. So I'm gonna hit the powder drop, and I'm just gonna, the first the first one I always throw away, I never uh, use that for my measurement. So the second one will measure, dump it onto the scale, and this particular, it looks like it's set, it's set up at uh, about 28 grains of this particular powder, so we're gonna wanna go a little heavier than that to get up to the 31 for this recipe. So. I'm just gonna open open the throat of this a little bit. And again, burn the first one. Measure my second one. And now we're at 30.9. So like I said, the recipe that we want, that we're using for this particular load is uh, 31, so. And that's 31 right on the nuts. So now we'll uh, put our scale away. And go ahead and powder our cases. So this is why you really wanna get a, a red tray like this because it holds your cases upright. And you can just go through and powder them one by one. As you can see, it goes pretty quick. Now if you're unsure or you want to dial in um, a particular load for enhanced accuracy, what a lot of guys will do is they'll look in the book and they'll take the lowest um, powder charge and work up from there using a trickler. So I've actually got a trickler here, I'll show you. This is this is what a trickler is. So all you do is you dump your powder on the top and then you just turn the knob until it just spits out a little bit and then uh, you do that onto your scale and then you can check out different loads that way. But like I said, for this particular uh, pistol, I, I know what I'm, what I'm using here, so it's 31 grains. So just like that, we have everything powdered already. Now we're ready to do the final step in this, which is going to be our bullet seat and crimp. So we'll move back over here to the press and pull out our uh, powder through expander die. So we'll put that back and then we'll grab our uh, bullet seat and crimp die. So um, here it is. If you can see up in there, there's just a cone-shaped plunger that you adjust, and then it, um, the the seat depth will actually how, how far you have this turned down into your press will actually determine the, how hard of a crimp is put on the the case, 
and then uh, by adjusting this knob on the top is going to be how far down your bullet actually seats. So in order to do this correctly, this is kind of a, a, a touch and touch and go uh, adjustment here as well. So in order to do this correctly, we'll just go ahead and put one of our charged cases into the press and then grab a piece of our lead. I actually said 325 grain hollow points earlier. Uh, turns out I was actually didn't have enough of that lead, so I'm going to be using a spear um, deep curl hollow point at 300 grain. We're actually going to use the same powder charge, which is fine. Uh, you can use this. Uh, you can use the same powder charge for heavier bullets if you're using lighter bullets, but not vice versa. So just be cognizant of that. So do, when we're uh, seating our bullets, as you can see now, we've belled our case here, so the bullet. Uh, the lead just sits right on top, and now we're going to uh, go ahead and see that. So I've actually got this pre-adjusted again, but what you're going to want to do is um, you're going to want to first adjust your bullet seating. So get the bullet seated where you want by turning the top, and then uh, apply your crimp secondly, because once you apply your crimp, that bullet's not going to be able to move in there anymore, so you want to make sure you have that uh, do that last. So let's just take a look and see where I've got this die set up right now. So uh, I've got it turned down to the lock ring and I didn't adjust this at all. So it should be uh, set up the same way it was last time I did this. So with that, we'll just go ahead and crimp. So as I pull the lever down, I'm kind of feeling. And as you can see, um, if we look at lead that I've loaded from last time, we're, uh, we're actually seating the bullet a little, little, uh, little too deep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the top of my uh, die outward, and then that will not seat the bullet quite as deep. So let's go ahead and try this again. And that looks really, really good. So, you can see the three of them together. Now, that being said, you're going to want to make sure that it actually is going to cycle in your gun. So, for this, what I'm going to be using, like I said, is uh, Magnum Research Desert Eagle, which is the cartridge that this gun that this cartridge was actually designed for and uh, here's here's the gun itself and then first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that it actually fits into the magazine so what I'm looking for when I do this is is it gonna actually clear the mag magazine so when I look at this I don't that's a little bit too close for me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my die down and seat um, seat the bullet down a little further so We'll go ahead and put this back in and then seat the bullet down a little further. And as you can see, it just came down a little bit, so that might be all we need. And if you look in here now, it clears pretty easily. So, and then the first one that we did, it's no problem because it was actually seated quite a bit deeper. So, let's go ahead and seat a couple more of these so that we have a full magazine and we can cycle it and make sure that it's actually going to cycle in the gun. One of the things with pistol rounds is, uh, especially in an automatic, you want to make sure that there's really no resistance going into the chamber, especially on a blow bat or a gas operated gun like this, Desert Eagle platform, because it will not, there isn't a lot of force actually chambering that round. So you want to make sure that there's little, little resistance, if any. So now we're, we'll go ahead and load our magazine. And uh, when I've actually loaded for this gun in the past, I've actually just taken the barrel out. So now, as you can see, we're going to put the safety on cock the gun, and as you can see, no problem with chambering. So now, very important to make sure that the gun is actually unloaded before we go any further. So we'll pull the magazine out, cycle the gun a few times, 
take the safety off and just uh, uncock the gun. So now at this point we know that we've got a, a round that chambers in the firearm and we can go ahead and finish loading the rest of our uh, primed and uh, primed and powdered cases here. So now as you can see we're all done with loading our 19 pieces of the 50 Action Express or 50 AE round and then typically what I'll do is uh, peel the label from the package of the lead that I've used just to make sure that there's no confusion I don't write something wrong uh, and that way if I uh, really like the load I can just take the part number right off of here and go and get more of the exact same lead I also have a label in here that says uh, the caliber, the date, the powder I used, the exact weight of the powder I used in grains, the bullet, um, the weight of the bullet, the primer, and uh, the brand of case that I used too. So that all helps just to identify this particular load from any other load uh, that I might use for that particular gun. So with that, just make sure that you uh, inspect and clean your dies when you, before you put them away. And really the key to this is having a nice clean uh, workspace so that um, when you come back everything is where you left it. This is a, what my reloading bench looks like. Uh, and as you can see I use the Hornaday Auto Progressive Press there too. One of my other videos is me reloading some 9mm with that. It's a really good, uh, works really well. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.